Hey everybody, I'm coming with a quick video um, just to talk about a book that I just completed reading. The book is actually by Reverend Ernest Angley. He wrote the book in, well, he had it published in 1950, so it is from the past. And I do remember reading it uh, back in um, 96. Um, I read it and it was rather old when I picked it up then. And back then it had me shook. Today, after I finished, I finished, I completed the book on yesterday. And it's still some scary points. I'll briefly show you how the book looks. It is found on Amazon.com. If you have a Kindle app that you can possibly add to your um, smartphone or your tablet, um, then the book is $2.50 on Amazon.com. I'm not sure how much the hard copies are, but I know that um, the Kindle edition is $2.50. And this is how it looks. It's called Rapture. And this is some more information. Okay. And so this book, again, it gave me goosebumps because it was very um, detailed it does not appear like it was written in the 50s because it seemed like it could have happened today. And what he did was he took Revelations, the book of Revelation. He took Daniel and other scriptures in regards to the rapture and he compiled it into a fiction novel. Now, this came out before the Left Behind series and a lot of other things that we have we may have seen or read. And this book bases around multiple characters from the start of the book to the end of the book. Um, it's dealing with multiple characters and what happened before the rapture, the day before the rapture, and then the tribulation period right after the rapture. Um, one of the two of the characters that has stuck to my memory the most is one of um, a young lady named Hester. And then the other one is of a young man named Jim. Now, I'll just briefly go over it because you may want to read it for yourself. It's only 12 chapters, but it's very descriptive. I would say if you kind of have a weak stomach towards the end, it's a little bit graphic, but you get the full picture of what's going on. Um, and... Okay, so one character, this is, I'll just, I won't even go into depth with the characters. I will say this. It shows you about what happened to churches that believe in the rapture and teach on the rapture. And those who um, don't really reference it, don't really think it's going to happen. So it shows you both sides. It shows you who's left behind, who gets to stay. Um who goes with God. Uh, it goes into detail of how they felt. And then it the, during the tribulation period, everything unravels from there. It's like the locust is mentioned and all of the things that attacks during the revelation, I mean, the scar, sorry, the tribulation period. It, he just completely just gives you that visual through reading of how it would be. I mean, like I said, y'all, um, the book will will have you like, ooh, Lord Jesus, I do not want to be here for no tribulation. And it's so it's so crazy. The other day I was um watching a young lady's video who visually paints what God shows her in her dreams in regards to tribulation and the rapture. And she had a picture up of a line of people that were linked up and they were chained together and they had um, handcuffs on their arms. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, back in 2012, I had a sem very similar dream and everyone was linked up, chained up and handcuffed together. 
And um, they were young people, though, and they were all crying out. And what she said God showed her about it was that it was they had taken the mark. And so they were slaves of Satan. In my dream, they were weeping and they were crying. And now I know it's because they took the mark. Well, that's the whole reason why I started this YouTube channel was because it was like during that time, God had been pouring out a lot of um, dreams, visual um, dreams to me about the end times and things that will go on. And he was showing a host of other people, still is showing a host of other people what will happen. And you can just pull up rapture dreams on YouTube and, and see many of them. But again, it, you know, I um, know that God is coming back soon. Jesus is coming back soon. We do see the signs. I know I was listening to my local radio station the other day on the AM dial, and there were a couple of pastors within one day all talking about end time. And I, you, you hardly hear about it. But I heard them talking about it locally, um, others, and um, they were mentioning about, you know, Christ coming back. So I just really think that it is going to be a time during that tribulation period. I do not want to be here for that, y'all. Um, I'm sure many of you don't either because that's a tough time. And a lot of people are saying judgment is quickly hitting America through uh, different things. And what I believe um, during this time should be the focus. And this is just me. I could be, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. But what I think is that the body of Christ should come together more like huge churches that are out there. Um, I was thinking about the whole, um, the, the, um, what do you call it? The hurricane that's going on in Texas. And, you know, I, I've, I've been praying. A lot of people have been praying, you know, that God will calm that storm down. And I, 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 another thing I believe is that if the body of Christ came together, which means huge churches, because this huge, big, popular churches that are in Texas. I mean, you, the list can go on. You know who they are off TV. Um, who Joel Osteen, Bishop Jakes. Uh, Kenneth Copeland. It's a lot of big ministries that are in the Texas area. And just imagine if the whole church, the whole body of Christ, not split up, but just came together as one. God has given us the authority through his word and through his name to cast that thing right back out to the sea, you know, and even to come together and pray for our nation. And so I just believe that God is looking at us when it comes to some of those things that may come to this land, our land, you know, the America and other nations, not just America. I believe that if the, the church, the body of Christ, the true body of Christ come together as one and not split themselves off and different denominations and church, big church, little church. I believe if everyone came together, those that are truly in the body of Christ, we could do a host of things in this nation. And then that takes me back thinking about Azusa Street, how they were coming from around, not just in America, but they were coming from England and different other places just to go and get a piece of that revival. And so that was something that was sparked. And I'm sure that was not the only revival that was sparked here in America. But can you imagine if the, the body all believed like that with one accord and came together um, to do, you know, see the, the mighty hand of God moving, you know, through us. You know, as a body, we could do so much. But anyway, um, I would again, that book was called uh, Raptured by Reverend er Ernest Angley. And I'm sure it's many other rapture books, but that's just the one that I just finished reading. And it was very captivating. Um, I think that, you know, um, just reading that and allowing others to just get that glimpse would really have your heart drawn. One, it was one particular, and I'm going to go after this comment. There was one particular um, 
one particular thing that happened in the book that I had to actually say, Lord, is that real? Is that a possibility? There was a, a mother in the book who had a an, an adult son and her adult son was married with a kid. And um, the adult son was raised in church from a little boy on up. But he married a young lady who was not saved, had no desire to go to church. And so he did not make that choice because his mother prayed for him nightly, daily. She prayed for her son up until the rapture happened. She was in a revival praying that God would save her son save his wife, save their grandbaby, her grandbaby. And she just called out to God and cried out for her son and pleaded that he would just turn his life around. And so after the rapture took place, this young man was like, mom, he didn't make it. His mother went, his daughter went because she was like about four years old. She went, but him and his wife were left behind. And so the mom comes, you know, not the mom, but the son realizes, oh, wow, I'm left behind. My mom taught me about this. And so he was such in a repentive mode, like, Lord, I can't believe that I actually missed out on you. And my mom told me, well, anyway, the story goes on and now it's during the time of the tribulation. And he has a choice to make because his wife is extremely sick. But the only way that she could get medical attention was if they took the mark of the beast. And so at this point, he's like, I don't want to take that mark because I know if I take that mark, my soul belongs to the devil at that point. And then I can't be in heaven with my mom and my daughter. Well, his wife is like, well, when we marry, you say you love me. And if you love me, you'll go and you'll, you'll help save my life and you'll go get that mark. So he goes the whole time. He's contemplating. He's praying. He don't know what to do. And so when he finally gets there, he decides to take the mark. And when he took the mark, this hatred filled his heart. And he called his mother a fool for believing in that. It's like that mark just made him become a fool. I mean, he was a full-blown fool. He blasphemed. He did much that was wrong in the sight of God. And he had no cares. And so he he made it feel like, you know, it was such an easy thing to do, which was another thing I saw in one of my past dreams that God showed me. He showed me that during that time, people are going to make it seem like, oh, it's nothing to it. It doesn't hurt. Like you've seen uh, recently in the news in Wisconsin, there was a company that they're now getting the chip and they said it doesn't hurt. It's just a prick as if you're getting blood drawn and it's in you. That technology piece is in you. Same as com com companies overseas that are doing it. Anyway, back to the story. In that book, once he took that mark and once he went home to his wife. Guess what? She had died. Guess where she went? Hell. So he took the mark, which he shouldn't have done. And then his wife still died and ended up going to hell. This was a, a I'm telling you, this, this book, uh, like I said, it, it really had you really thinking praying, everything else, because you never know what a person will do at the last minute during that time. And so then there was another character, and I said I wouldn't do it, but I just briefly will mention her and then I'll go. This other character, um, you know what? I'm going to hold out because it's a, such a good book that I want you to find out about what happens with her. And it's like I said, it's multiple characters is it's, it's circling around what happened to them during this time, but it's a good um, read and it will probably take, depending on your timing, um, it probably wouldn't take no more than about um, two to three days, depending on how fast you read for the book to be complete. But anyway, guys, be blessed, stay prayed up, stay looking up, stay in the word of God, and you have a blessed day.